What's going on guys and gals? Stock Jock here up $611 in the first hour of trading today. Uh, not a lot of trades, but let's get into it. So my first trade was RCON. This was on the gap scanners. It was a stock that was gapping up this morning. You can see that it opened up here and just sold off the entire day. But the reason why I like this one is, hey, I've traded it before, but the reason why I wanted to play this one is it's, it's had a history in the past of making big moves. You can kind of see this huge move back here. And I had some news today. I can't even remember what it was. It doesn't even matter. But uh, the trade, the, the entry on this, okay, so it's, it's gapped up. It's shown kind of weakness uh, pre-market that it's kind of coming back down. So, you know, most of these stocks, they're just, they might get a quick pop, but they usually sell off. So that's what we have here at the open. It starts selling off right before the open. Uh, it opens, we dip down, and it starts coming back up. And I go long looking for the the red to green move. Uh, typically, I like a cut, you know, pretend this was the 930 candle. I would typically prefer, you know, a couple, three candles of downward movement, and then the first candle over candle is our red to green move, and that's usually what sends slings, slingshots this thing up. But uh, I played it off the opening candle, which I don't typically like doing. So here's the 930 candle, sold off, came back up, 931 AM candle, and uh, it sold off, came back up, and I just played candle over candle. I got in a little early because I thought I saw volume hitting it on the, on the buy side, and it just wasn't the case. So why did I get out? Well, the, you'll see it when I pull up the level two, but as we hit this VWAP area here, <clears throat> it had a chance to go. You know, it was hitting 190s, 191s, and as soon as it would hit that area, you know, the bid would drop 10 cents. <laughs> and at that point, I'm just like, okay, there's no, there's no follow through, there's no volume pouring into this thing that's gonna sling the sling. And there, it had a lot of good levels that it could break through. It could break through the VWAP. It could break through, you know, two dollar area, and then high a day. You know, it wasn't that far away. That was the pre-market high of this thing, like 215. Yeah, I mean, all that goody, all that good stuff to break through and start ripping into the stratosphere was right there, but it didn't take it. So when I saw that there was selling coming in around the VWAP, I sold for a quick uh, seven cent profit on 2,000 shares. It's a good sign for momentum. Remember on this one, we've got I'm long Archon 182. Share seller 68, 27, 19, 15, 10, boom, it's getting bought up, but then another seller 69, another seller 70, seller 70, someone cuts under the ass well, 69, goes now, so now 72. Now. We're gonna move the key Reading here. the tape on this is a little harder. Archon, like I said, I just keep it on watch. And NDM now hitting 280, 281. The problem with NNDM is that um, I'm not seeing really a good pullback where I can get in. Yeah. I'm out 189. So this next trade is a very risky trade. It's not a trade that I typically play. I just felt that the move, this is just kind of an oversold looking for a bounce play. And the reason why it's risky is because you're trading against the current direction of the stock. So the current direction of the stock is obviously down, right? I go long right here. And there wasn't there wasn't a lot of things that let me explain. Okay, so basically in the matter of, you know, what seven, eight minutes, the stock went from nine dollars to seven eighty. That's a dollar twenty move. That's a humongous move for this stock. Right? We're outside of the Bollinger bands. This thing is just going parabolic parabolic on the downside. You know you got to think of it if you're short and you went short up here and you broke this whole dollar level, this $8 level right here, you got to think that you're going to try to cover right here. You're not going to get greedy and look for, you know, any kind of a bigger move. You just had a humongous move to the downside, right? So I went long right here th thinking that shorts were going to cover on the other side of eight because of this huge, I mean, they made a dollar twenty, right? A dollar to a dollar twenty in this move. Good for them. They made their money. They're going to cover. 
they're not going to sh- new shorts aren't going to come into this right after that huge move they got to wait for a bounce before they short it again so i'm thinking here okay shorts are going to cover it's going to push the stock price up people like me are going to look for a bounce play they want cheap shares that's going to push this thing up so it was just way oversold and you kind of see here on the rsi level it hit oversold here now oversold does not mean it, it's going to bounce up every single time it could stay oversold and keep running down to six dollars if it wanted to this was just an ed- educated guess so i go long here um at 941 at 796 just on the other side of eight right and i'm saying to myself okay it it looks like a little some buyer you'll see it on the l2 it looks like buyers are stepping in or short sellers covering and it looks like uh it's going to move up as that happens. Well, it kind of just stays below $8 for a whole minute, which is not a good sign. You want to see that bounce happen pretty quick, especially if it drops so fast. And the very fact that we hung out here was a bear sign for me. So we moved to this candle. This candle opens up and it goes candle under candle, which is normally a very bad sign, right? Okay. Then we're going to continue our move down. But when it happened, when the candle under candle happened, it didn't sell off. It held this level. My absolute stop loss was going to be right here at 785. I think I said that my stop loss was going to be 790, which was the low of this one minute candle right here. But since we broke it and it really didn't fall apart anymore, I was thinking, well, if it's not going to fall apart anymore, the only where only place it's going to go up or go, the only place it's going to go is up at this point. So. I'm feeling a little bit better. Again, this is a super risky play, so it's okay for me to not feel good about it because it's really risky. It's not one that I typically like to do. So uh, we're inside this candle, and I'm telling myself, okay, my absolute stop loss is going to be right here. If it breaks this, this thing's probably going to fall apart down to 750. Uh, There's just nothing holding it up right now. But we do get a few bidders coming in. They pop it back over 8. Right when we get over 8, there's not a lot of bids there and the bids that do show up they get hit pretty hard and pretty often so i start trying to ease my way out i sell a thousand shares at 808 uh right inside this pop here that we had and then um a minute later inside this candle i sell another thousand shares at 805 just got a decent fill at or i'm not 805 815 so it, it worked out but you know this is a this is a dangerous i'm I am trying to go long on a stock that obviously is in a downtrend and that can work from time to time, but, uh, it, it, it was risky. It worked out, but they sometimes don't work out and you have to be willing to cut them loose. I was absolutely going to get out if this low broke again. You know, if I was inside this candle and we broke this low, I definitely would be out. I don't care if I just lost, you know, you know, 15, 10, 15 cents on 2000 shares, $300. I'm out because there's nothing holding this thing up. If buyers aren't going to step in after a dollar 20 move to the downside, then they're not going to, they're not going to step in after a dollar 50, $2 move to the downside. Well, maybe $2 move, but who knows? So that's the trade. Long TPIV for an oversold bounce. 76. Stop loss will be 
you can watch a five minute setup first five minutes be on the medium high I still keep my eye on the 95 295 might be where I would take a starter and then three dollars where I would double still have 808 <clears throat> so, so watching it here okay, I've got a starter there at 295 I'm looking for that break over three dollars So NNDM, I want to see it break over three. Right now it's a little touch and go, but I do think it's gonna break three just the way it curled up there. So I'm in at 294. And now I want to see the break of three. Let's see what it does here. I don't like seeing that seller at 88. The high this candle was 97. 88 by 100, that sounds like a market <coughs> This right now is sort of forming a one minute micro pullback. Feels like a little bit of tug of war. The low of this pullback was 270. Ah, man, that's disappointing. Out the rest, 815. So this next trade was on IQ, and just these China stocks like BIDU, IQ, uh, HUYA, they were all kind of, BABA, they're all kind of running together today. Uh, this was just a simple one minute candle over candle play that, um, yeah, it didn't work out, but I still made profit on it. So we had this huge move up, sell off, huge move up again, pull back, and then I played for the candle over candle. And the problem is, is, is that it happened, right? I got candle over candle by a penny, and then it came right back down. Uh, so when that happens and it doesn't show continuation, at that point I'm just looking to get out either break even or for a small profit. In this case, I had a good entry at 34.67. Um, I got in a little early because it looked like the L2 was lining up, that the bids were, you know, moving in for you know, buying pressure. So I was okay with getting in a little bit early. Uh, it just so happened that it popped up and came back down, kind of screwed the chart up a little bit for what I was playing for. So at that point, I was telling myself, if I get a pop, I'm going to sell. And that's what I did. Got out at 34.76. As you can see, if I would have held, it did a nice jump through 35, but you know I was ha I had to play the charts, uh, and it did not do what I thought it was going to do. So I had to cut it loose, and move on. In this case, cutting it loose, and moving on meant $200. AT&T Alpha Delta November Tango getting a downgrade at Baird. Long IQ 3467 for a one minute candle over candle. Stop loss will be 56. Therapeutic spiking here at 3110. Out 34.76. So my next trade was actually NSPR. This one was the news play that just didn't work out. I, I played it because NSPR has a history of making runs. Had a news headline, pop, didn't go anywhere, sold, basically break even. I'm not going to show that one. But uh, what was my next play? This one was a chat room pump. You can kind of see the volume that they created came right here. I honestly thought I was going to get more, but I guess, you know, the summer days are really keeping the traders away right now. So I went long off that chat room pump, held it for three minutes, and it really didn't go anywhere. So uh, I got out. I thought they'd create this momentum, get this thing going high day, and get this thing taken off, especially going maybe candle over candle and daily was my hope. It just didn't work. So I, I hit the sell button and I made, made 20 bucks on the trade. So I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but it didn't work out. Oh well, cut loose, move on.
out lot plus two. And that's how I ended the first hour of trading, up $611 in the first hour. Uh, I did close a swing trade in my swing trade account. Uh, I was carrying BIDU. I made about 9% on that one, just over $1,000 on that trade. So that, that worked out well. But uh, other than that, you know, pretty slow morning and not a lot going on. I was extremely, extremely exhausted. I was up, up really late the night before. Uh, and you know, I was just happy I didn't completely screw something up. So anyway, if you're interested at all, I run a free discord chat room link for that is in the description down below, as well as all the chat rooms and news sources that I subscribe to and recommend. Those are all down in the, uh, <clears throat> the description of this video as well. All right. I'll see you in the next one.